Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Angel. You know, since morning, I've been listening to all the different speakers, and now So Hong and then Angel, I become smaller and smaller. <laughs> I'm shrinking, okay? So I must let you all know that whatever I'm sharing, and thank you for inviting me to share, yeah? Whatever I'm sharing today is not my work. So unlike all the other speakers, I'm not a volunteer, so it is not my work. But rather, it's called Healing Space. I have left several copies with uh, Eunice. Um, we sell them for $28 per copy, but uh, today it's for free. And uh, the, in the book, right, the inspiration from the book is actually on the passion work of our volunteers in Kutikpat Hospital. And um, this group of volunteers started way back already in Alexandra Hospital, as mentioned by Angel. And they wanted to create healing gardens that can engage senses of sight, sound, scent and touch. And that hospital need not be a sterile place and a, an intimidating place. So these are the people. And the one I want to highlight first, the first person is Rosalind. Rosalind used to be our chief occupational therapist in Alexandra Hospital. And when we restructured the hospital in 2000, she came forward and said, can I volunteer to set up a gardening club? And of course, at that time, we have nothing to do. So we said, go, 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 go and do whatever you want. And she, trans she, she literally transformed the gardens in Alexandra Hospital by bringing in a lot of um, volunteers to help us. And with that volunteer came the husband, Willie, who is an architect, retired. So I pay for Rosalind, I get Willie for free. <laughs> <laughs> and subsequently, when we move, when we, by the time we move out of um, Alexandra Hospital in 2010, we actually left behind 100 species of butterflies. And if you, it, it, lately, there's been an article in the newspaper that says that Singapore's in the, the, the butterflies are getting extinct. We now have 100 different species in Alexandra Hospital. And if you come to Kutikpuat, you will see more than 30 species in our gardens. Yeah, so she has actually made that difference, and uh, she's world famous by now. In Kutikpuat, we because of the environment that we wanted to build, a healing environment for our patients, we also had a lot of volunteers who come in and say, I want to do something. So Hua Chiu, Dr. Ho Hua Chiu, he's a bird man, so he's interested in birds. Okay, so no, take note that they are not interested in patients. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> he's interested in birds. Uh, Rosalind wanted the plants, and with the plants came the butterflies. Uh, you see Dr. Tan Walak there, who's a, a, a dent dental surgeon. He and Chiu San, they're interested in fishes. Because a lot of indigenous fishes in Singapore are going extinct, right? So they are actually interested in bringing the fishes in. So they donated all the 100 species of fishes that you come to my hospital and see, all come from them. And some of them can be eaten. Uh, my kitchen do catch them and cook them. <laughs> <laughs> we also have up in the seventh floor of our hospital, a farm. And on this farm, you will find chai sim, bak choy, all kinds of vegetables, more than 50 different types of fruit trees. Lately, I just enjoyed two very nice mangoes from my COO's tree. <laughs> Each of us planted one tree when we moved in. And uh, Madam Lim, you see Madam Lim up there? She is one of the volunteers who is there 7 to 30 in the morning. And she's there helping us to look after the farm. And with her, she brings a group of volunteers from living around Yishun as well. The other guy whom we are very appreciative is Ronnie Chiu, who is also a volunteer. And he, he don't love the, the soil, so they fight, you know, Madam Lim and him. He loves recycling. Anything that is recycling, he will love to try to grow things, organic plants. So he goes after hydroponics, and, and he plants lovely cherry tomatoes. And lately, we have been experimenting with rice. So if there's war, my hospital is safe. I got rice. <laughs> Okay, there are three things we want to do, uh, the volunteers wanted to do. First, we wanted to help patients recover more quickly. We wanted to build conducive spaces for our staff and the patient's family who are under stress so that in the environment they can actually step off a corner and have a chit chat on their own. Um, we also wanted to create a place making concept to bring the community into the hospital, to share you know, what we are doing in the hospital with them, and then there can be social interactions. So William Wan actually did me a big favour by explaining to you all about the brain, how the brain works, okay? So traditionally, we always talk about left brain, right brain, right? Now everybody is talking about the whole brain. And when we were doing all these things, we didn't know what we were doing. But now that there's a big interest in neuroscience and we've been reading about it, when you are in an environment, when you see sunlight, natural light, when you see calmness, when you see nature, 
your brain is stimulated to produce chemicals. So everything that William say is true, except this is not from touching, it's from the environment around you. So this whole brain concept of having stimulating your brain and then let them produce chemicals that can then uh, affect the influence, the hormones in our body, actually induce calmness, pleasantness, so that you actually rest and become very nice people around. So there are a lot of kind people in Kutikwat Hospital because of the environment. Yeah? And a lot of evidence-based research has actually proven this, you know, um, that a few minutes of viewing plants and nature scenes, so if you're lying on the bed and you look out and you see something, the light, you see nature, you know morning from night, actually it enhances your good feelings and of calmness and pleasantness. So with that background in mind, we, when we were given that three hectares of land uh, next to the pond in Kutepat House in, in Yishun, we jump on it because straight away we say, hey, we want to create a garden in a hospital and a hospital in a garden. That's what we wanted. So 30 years from now, if you come to Yishun, you should not see Kutekwat Hospital. You should see an uh, equatorial forest. And when you walk into the forest, you will discover Kutekwat Hospital. <laughs> okay? Now, how did the architects and the, the volunteers help us? Basement, if you go down to the basement, you will notice, uh, when you go, go into our basement, you will see forest. It should be forest. Now it's still not. Now you still see planting trees and all that. So you see an uh, equatorial forest with the sound of water and all that. And uh, you feel that you are in a forest. You see? So you, it's equatorial forest. This, this one we went to uh, uh, Shangri-La and copied their, their, their waterfall. So this is a medical Shangri-La. Yeah? So when you're there, you can see the fishes contributed by Walak and Chusan, and then you hear the sound of water, you see nature. This is in the basement. And the design of the hospital is such that when you go onto the first floor and you look up, you will then see the canopies of the trees. Because the trees grow from the basement, you see the canopies of the trees, and then you look up, you will see bohemia plants with orange flowers coming down, you know, from the trailing down from all the wards and from the corridors in the different floors of the hospital. So you feel that in the garden. And if you are in the ward, in, if you're in a subsidized ward, you are in the air, 10th floor, there's no garden, but you still can look up, you can still see the sky when you're flat on the bed. If we can't let you see the garden on the ground floor, we have a balcony and we put potted plants there so that you can still see the nature. So this is how we, we, it was designed to give that. And I must say, th uh, we are very thankful to all our volunteers because without their effort, I would have to employ a whole army of gardeners. So actually, if you notice, our, our gardens would need minimal... A lot of people say, hey, you spend a lot of money on the landscaping. Actually, there's no landscaping because it's supposed to be a forest. Forests don't need maintenance, yeah? <laughs> but we have designed the watering, we have designed the, the gardeners to be able to help us yeah, in a very efficient way. And when you go into the patient's area, the patient space is designed floor to, from floor to ceiling window. So even if you're flat on the bed for three months, you can still see light. You still know when it's day and night. You can still feel the ventilation, the greenery. Yeah? So that will enhance the recovery. And Roger Ulrich, a very famous green, greenie in America, has a long time ago in 1984 already proven that if you give a window view to a patient, it improves their, he their healing. Um, Bruce Rabin in the University of Pittsburgh also has a lot of papers published to say that when patients recover in rooms with ample natural light, it, they take less pain medications and they recover also faster. Yeah, so these are all proven by the uh, evidence in the literature. And if you can't get the natural environment, then put in some art. You know? So nowadays, thanks to the internet and all, you can get very cheap paintings, right? You can download digital uh, environmental kind of paintings. Don't put abstract art. Abstract art will turn the patients crazy. <laughs> they get confused, okay? So what you should have is natural, natural art. So if you don't have natural environment, put in the art because art contributes to the healing and you don't need to bring in the masterpieces. You can bring in the copies as well. We happen to have an underground basement uh, service area that is required. We, can't, we, we have to build something there, so we built our day surgery there. And because it's in a very protected area, we don't have plants. So what we did was put in light boxes and put in the, some digital kind of art on the ceiling so that at least we can pretend to have nature inside that bomb shelter. 
around throughout the whole hospital, we created corners and niches where patients can step aside. Families can come together when they visit to bring their parents down and have quiet moments together. They have quiet corners where they can sit and just look at things and just talk. Yeah, so it, this is intentional and it's created throughout all the whole hospital. A lot of patients write in to us and say, why don't you give me a room? I want a room. We say, no, the whole hospital is your room. You can go anywhere. You can sit down and have a chit-chat. So even the lens, whenever we have pots and things, we also make sure that you know, it is aligned with this nature and environment that we want to have. And for the staff, right, it is proven that for us healthcare workers, when we are engaging our brain on direct attention to do task focus kind of work, we get tired, then we get exhausted, we make mistakes. Yeah. So even for the staff, the papers have proven that if you give them psychostimulation along the way, good environment, they look out, you actually can help them to make less mistakes because they bec their brain becomes less exhausted. They may not know it, you know. So even in the operating theatre, if you come to our hospital, you will find that my surgeons get to see light. Because in operating theatre, normally you don't get to see the light. But in our hospital, we insist that the light shall come into the operating theatre. So the doctors now know when it's time to go home as well. <laughs> Next to our hospital, we were very fortunate to have Ishun Pond. So we brought in another type of volunteers because you know that pond is a stormwater collection. So it's very ugly, very dirty, very not allowed to go near. But what we did was we bring in URA, HDB, um, National Parks and the Waterworks people, the PUB, and got them to release their RF funding. Okay, so they shared with us their RF funding and together we, our endowment fund gave us some money and we now rejuvenated the whole pond. One kilometers of very nice greenery walk so patients can exercise and walk around the pond. And really, if they cross over to the other side, it is Ishun Park. So it's really very beautiful now. And with that, this is the concept of placemaking. That means create spaces where you can now bring the community into the hospital to work with you. So with that ability now, we have a lot of uh, programs, events that we can organize with the grassroots leaders to bring in the community volunteers, the school children and all. Yeah? So you can come to our hospital, you'll see Tai Chi's by the, by the bay, you know, by the pond, and a cooking demonstration and a lot of event, sporting events for our staff and for the community. Our volunteers came in with the intention not because of patients, but we harnessed their energy they have the, the passion to want to coexist with nature. They want to ensure, they have a passion to make sure we conserve the environment. So we work with them to do that. And with that, if you come to our hospital, you'll be able to count at least 100 different, uh, 30, by now it should be about 32 different types of butterflies. Uh, birds should be 20 something, I think. Yeah? And of course, we had ministers who come and also uh, help us. Yeah? So we have a butterfly trail. Butterfly is very particular where they lay eggs, you know, the, the, so that the caterpillar can exist. So understanding the host plant is very important, and the volunteers are the ones who do this for us. You'll find birds and fishes. And this is a very nice picture captured by one of our doctors. You know, uh, a very nice moment when he ca captured this in the hospital. So in place, concept of placemaking, we, we observe how people live, how people play, then we put the tables and then let them you know, create spaces there. So we observe where people like to stand around or sit around, then we create the space rather than create tables and then you shall sit there. So placemaking is a very different concept. Placemaking requires us to observe how the patients move, how their families gather, then we turn that space for them into a nice place together. And it creates community ownership because once they come in and they, they start coming together, you do things with them, you, they begin to own the place as well. So many of our volunteers now are coming to help us, including the school children. And these are some of our very nice crops from our farm. If you go up to our farm, you see the cherry tomatoes. You see very unusual bananas, right? Our bananas got seeds, you know? <laughs> we have papayas, we have pineapples, we have the, the jambu, yeah? So I think the, the, the important thing about this healing space is that there is a, it gives people a sense of orientation when they are recuperating. It, it brings in the daylight for them. It gives them access to nature. And there's harmony if you can give some music. So even our toilets, we also have music as well. Okay? And of course, some of water. 
And all this will help you, your staff, and the patients reduce the stress and create healing for them. We currently, this, this design, we are very fortunate to have it take place in Kutekwat Hospital. We are now planning the Yishun Community Hospital, which is next door. And because the patients in the community hospital is going to stay with us for more than 30 days, it's going to be even more healing, I think. It will be even better than Kutekwat Hospital in terms of the, thing, the thoughts that go into it because we now know the mistakes we make. Yeah? So we are now learning from it as well. And we are also planning a medical centre in Woodlands, uh, in Admiralty. So this is my sharing on the healing space. I, I, once again, I want to show my appreciation to our volunteers. Yeah? And I'd like to thank all of you for listening. Thank you. Thank you.